All right, guys, welcome back to another Cichlidscape video. Previously in the fish room, we set up the 125 gallon South American Cichlid tank, which is currently running super smooth. And then we did the 55 gallon Angelfish Jungle tank. And I'll leave a card for this video and playlist up at the top right hand side of your screen right now if you want to check that out. Today, we are moving on to tank three. And this is my Blue Neon African Cichlid breeding group that will be going in a 33 gallon long. I've had this group for a number of years now. Sadly, I did lose this guy's dad maybe about nine months ago now, but I did buy him as a young juvenile around six or seven years ago. And I estimate he was about a year old at that point. So he lived a pretty good life for an African Cichlid and was with a breeding group his entire life. So really had a had a pretty good time um if you know what i mean but <laughs> we're going to be moving these fish from the 40 gallon breeder and getting them into the 33 so let's get to it So before moving the fish, we are currently draining the tank with this water pump and hose. The hose is just running straight into the 33 gallon and filling it up. When I'm then moving the fish over, it will just be acting like a water change and a housing change, obviously. But besides that, it's going to be bang on the same, same water parameters and all that good stuff. The sand I'm using in here is the African Cichlid mix from Carib Sea. This just helps to buffer the water to get it right up there where the African cichlids like it. It is the same buffering capacity as the other black and white sand that I'm using in the 40 gallon as well. So there'll be no change in terms of pH and it'll just be a nice little housing move for them. So let's get this filled up and then we'll uh, escape the tank and uh, catch the fish. During the fill process, I always like to check the level of the aquarium just to make sure that it's staying the same throughout the fill process. The floor in the basement fish room isn't perfectly level, of course, nothing is ever simple. So I did have to throw some shims underneath the stand to compensate for this. Throughout this process, I'll just keep checking it, keep checking it every three, four, five minutes and I can make any adjustments if necessary. But Luckily, everything was fine with this one and no changes needed to be made. If you notice, I also used a piece of slate from some aquascaping wood that I previously bought from a fish store and I just had this directly under the hose so the sand didn't get disturbed too much during the fill process. So once the tank was filled up to a decent level, I'm now going to start aquascaping the tank before doing this though, I have previous rocks that I used in the old 125 that I'm just going to clean up just to make sure nothing's on them. Obviously I've got a beer with me as well, just makes time go by a little quicker. And after that, the rocks are then organized on the floor in size order just to make aquascaping the tank a little easier. I also have this egg crate that's going to go underneath these rocks and this will just help to distribute the weight of the rocks across the bottom of the tank and make sure that there's no really heavy points that could potentially crack the glass. During the scaping process of an African cichlid breeding tank, it's slightly different to an African cichlid show tank. In a show tank, I would merely just be looking at what looks good, kind of create maybe a few little swim throughs and some line of sight blocks for any fish that need to get away from aggressors. Can I also create some spaces in the tank where fish can just chill if they are getting bullied? In this situation, however, there's a few more things to think about. There are those points that I just previously mentioned, but I've also got to create spaces where the fish can actually breed. So gaps in between the rocks where they can perform their little mating dance where the female drops her eggs, the male fertilizes them, and then she picks them back up. And I'll overlay some footage of some previous 
video that I actually caught of this act previously with my Blue Neon group. Additionally to that, in this aquarium, I'm also thinking about where the filtration is gonna go. I'm not using in any canisters or hang on the backs in this aquarium. I'll just be using basic sponge filters. I just find these very easy to maintain. And they also just do a great job in terms of keeping the tank biologically stable and also filtering out those particulates that you don't want in your water. It's just the simplest form of filtration and really, really good for a breeding tank. So they're basically the things that I'm thinking about during the escaping process. But overall, I want it to look decent and also be functional for the fish. So that's basically a little insight into escaping an African cichlid breeding tank. And once that's done, it's time to move the fish. So here we are at the 40 gallon. I'm gonna take out a lot of the decorations before I try and catch any of the fish. Um, I've got some kind of Egyptian little pots in there that I previously used just for hideouts for the females and that kind of thing. The male obviously loves them too. Um, and I've also got that OG skull at the right hand side of the tank. If you remember that skull being in my African cichlid show tank, back in the day make sure you comment down below and let me know i appreciate you staying put on this channel and watching me even way back then um there was some there were some pretty cool days but we're just going to take those out then we're going to take the sponge filters out and get them in the tank then we're going to get to catching the fish i'm going to catch the blue neon male first i'll give you a quick show of him although i'm sure he's not going to be happy to be out of that tank then we'll put him in the 33 I'll quickly then catch all the females. I've also got a Cynodonis catfish in there that I want to show you. That little dude, well, I say little, he's not too little now. Um, he's grown quite a lot, probably seen since you last seen him in the 125, but he's absolutely awesome. Um, and he's going to be in the tank as well. I do find it really cool to see his behavior when the African cichlids are trying to breed. Um, and I'll show you a little clip of that later on in the video if I uh, if I can catch it once, um, once we get the... in but as you can see this guy is really really cool and he's grown a lot since I previously showed you guys him in the 125 a few years back now when he was uh, with the African cichlid show tank in there but there he goes and he'll be just fine in this tank as I've created a lot of little hideouts for him and I've still got one little thing left to put in this tank that he's gonna really like so we're going to get the rest of the tank filled up right now. I'm going to make a few tweaks as I want the sponge filters at the left side and the right side, just so it's a little bit better. I'm now filling up the rest of the tank with water out at the tap. This will just act as a little water change as I needed to do one on these tanks anyway. So probably got about 18 gallons from the 40 gallon and then 15 fresh out of the tap. I also dechlorinated this water with Fritz ACCR and I also added some Lake Malawi cichlid salt. I've been adding the cichlid salt now for a number of years and this just really helps match the conditions of Lake Malawi to your specific tank and this just in my opinion makes the fish feel a little bit more at home and since using that I've definitely noticed a difference in their overall health and colour. After some tweaks to the layout, this 
is the tank. Now, about four to five hours after the initial fill up, let's see if these guys will eat. Obviously they're not showing, or the male's not showing full coloration right now, but I think if we entice him with some food, he might, might show off for us. And usually after moving African cichlids to a new environment, they tend to try and breed straight away. Um, unsure why, but obviously I've moved these guys multiple times now, so let's see if we get lucky and potentially get some breeding behavior out of the young male and one of the females. So I hope you enjoyed that video guys and enjoyed the blue neon male just looking unbelievable. To say he would just move tank earlier that day, his colors and everything like that were absolutely on fire. So really excited to see how he progresses and this group progresses. I'm unsure if I'm gonna get back to breeding them again. Um, I'm kind of just in the phase now where, you know, the groups together, if the breed and some fry survive, then that's great. If not, then that's just kind of how it is. I'm also enjoying seeing the Synodonus catfish. As you could see in some of those previous um, videos, he was coming around when he saw the male and some of the females go into the bottom of the tank. Um, so I'm really interested to see that a little bit more and maybe he's kind of getting in the way. Um, but in all honesty, that, that doesn't bother me um, for right now. Um, let me know in the comments what you think to this. Should I get back to breeding this group and selling more of the fry and offspring and that kind of thing. Thanks for watching this one. I appreciate all the support. If you've not already subscribed and liked this video, make sure you do, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.